Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I want to take a look at today's Times crossword, um, which actually I have solved before. This was the puzzle that appeared in the grand final of the Times crossword championship uh, a couple of months ago, and it is, in my opinion, one of the finest Times crosswords you could ever wish to see. Now, I happen to know, uh, through further research, after after the event, this was a puzzle compiled by Richard Rogan, who is the current uh, Times crossword editor. Um, and I think any of you who are watching the video who think, well, I, I'd like to be a cryptic crossword setter, or I want to get better at um, compiling clues, um, would do very well to study this puzzle. This puzzle is replete with absolutely brilliant examples of cluemanship. And Right, so, so without further ado, I'll start to I'll start the puzzle now. Although I have solved it before, um, my memory is such that um, there will be clues I can remember. There will be other clues which I I don't remember, and that will be amusing to you guys knowing that I only solved this a little while ago. So one across after payment back versatile public transport. Okay, well, the, the clever thing about this clue is. The word play here takes up very little of the clue. In fact, it's just the first three letter, three words that we need to focus on in terms of working out um, uh, the word play. And then the definition here is versatile public transport. And probably the way to solve the clue is to think of a short word for a payment and then reverse it. Now, if you think of the word sub, that's half the battle because reverse the word sub at the end there, we get bus. So now we need something at the start here to mean versatile public transport. We'll make the whole thing mean that. You might think of minibus or omnibus, but we need to make sure that this first four letter word here means after. I think that the word we're looking for is post. And then we come to one down. Now I can remember the answer to this one. This is a very, very hard clue. So hats off to you if you read this clue and can solve it even with the P here, I still don't think it's very easy. Gut feeling about West Ham after a year. So as usual with Richard's clues, they have a very um, evocative surface reading. I mean, this is clearly making you think about football. It reads fairly naturally for, for a good crossword clue. And then we have to work out what it means. Now, when we see references in crossword clues to West Ham or the East End or certain parts of London, um, it's often, or Cockney, quite often it's hinting at dropping an H from something. So the way to read this clue, believe it or not, is that this is a six letter word which means gut. Then we need a five letter word which means a feeling where we're going to drop an H from that. And then we're going to put all that after a two-letter abbreviation for a year. And believe it or not, there is a two-letter abbreviation for a year in the sense of per annum. So if we put per annum and then we think about the word hunch for a feeling, we can drop the H from the front of that and we get unch. And the whole thing makes paunch, which is, of course, a word for your gut. So superb clue. Um, now let's have a look. What should we? Get? Maybe this this one. To increase demands at college, you must devour a lot of books. Um, okay. Well, if you're at college, you're up. That's uh, one of the meanings of the word up is to be up at university. Uh, you must devour a lot of books. Okay. So then we're looking for one of the short synonyms for the word you. Quite often you see the used. And that looks very nice here because that would allow us to put the, the in this construction and make the word the in the middle. So up the something, meaning to increase demands. And we need to put a three letter uh, expression here for a lot of books. And the trick here is to realize that the A is just plain. And then a lot of books could be a New Testament or an Old Testament. If we put NT in the middle there, we get up the ante to increase demands. What, the, what are the odds of criminal receiving 50 lashes? Again, brilliant surface. Absolutely brilliant surface. Um, and 
this is perhaps the most solvable clue in this puzzle in fact because if we look at the odd letters of the word criminal we would get C, I, I and A and we know that they're receiving 50. Now uh, as usual uh, in any cryptic crossword numbers like 50 you should always be thinking of what's their Roman numeral equivalent. We try uh, put L therefore in the middle of that it, the odd letters of criminal we can come up with the word cilia which even if it's not familiar um, as being your eyelashes um, so it's, it's lashes in the form of hair here rather than in the form of whips which is obviously what the surface reading is intending you uh, to think. Surpass what singers do in TV land. Okay, I've just remembered the answer to this clue. This took me ages uh, when I solved it first time. It is superb. Um, <laughs> so again, we have to be very careful with any good setter of a cryptic crossword with assuming that our normal reading of the words in the clue is the correct reading. I'm now going to read this clue again in, in a way that might help you to solve it. Surpass what singers do in TV land. So obviously the word singers and the word singers have the same spelling and just because we read this most naturally as singers we shouldn't assume that that's what the setter intends. So if we surpass what singers do we might set a light to something. Singers would only sort of only singe. And how does this work in terms of the wordplay? Well a TV is a set and if you land somewhere you alight. Um, so if you land a ship you alight from the ship and you go onto the dock. So at, again just lost in admiration for this sort of thing. It, it is so clever and so difficult to read correctly. But once you get it, you know, there's a sort of groan moment where you appreciate that you've been totally flummoxed um, by the clue. Um, right, work meeting, getting Swede upset and cross. Well, hmm, okay. Here it helps if you can if you're familiar with various types of mongrel and hybrid animals that tend to come up um, and God knows what this is the cross between but uh, there is an animal called a beefalo which is probably in a cross between a buffalo and something else a bison maybe um, and here what have we got? We've got a work meeting is a bee you may have come across the expression spelling bee but a bee is basically where people get together to make blankets sometimes and things like that. A work meeting and a Swede upset, well a Swede and an Olaf might be a word for a Swedish person. Um, so reverse that, send it upwards and we get beefalo. Rogue whose dad's loaded. Aha, okay so this is just a pun. Um, we need to think of a word or expression for a rogue. So how about son of a gun? And it, if your dad was loaded in the sense that he had a loaded gun, that's 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 how the sort of the pun is working. Look at this one. Um, hmm, rather annoyingly, I don't know what that is. We'll come back to that one. Um, in place of whiskey, except this. Well, I'm only helped here by knowing that whiskey is one of the international radio words uh, for the letter W. So if we try W at the start, and then what might be a four-letter word that you might say to somebody if you were to give them something and say, accept this, it might be here, here you go. Put those together and you get where, which means in place of. In the place of something happening would be where it happened. Feeble desire to accommodate mischievous child. Well, this one is solvable, I think, even by relative newcomers to the Times crossword. So, again, how would you solve it? Well, you have to decide which side of the clue is the definition. So it's either going to be feeble or it's going to be mischievous child. But the way I think that to, to work out which is intended to be the definition is to look at the middle of the clue and try and find instructional words in the middle of the clue. And here we have 
to accommodate. Well, that suggests that we need to put a word around another word. It needs to accommodate another word, which again implies that mischief, we must be looking for a short synonym for a mischievous, mischievous child that we can put inside a short word for a whip, for a desire. I said it there, it's wish. So if I put wish around a short word for a mischievous child, how about imp? The two that would immediately spring to mind would be imp and elf. We get wimpish, which clearly means feeble. Let's try that one. Nice way to do the part of King Edward. Uh, nice way to do the part. Now this is going to be some rep. I'm now thinking this. I should be reading this as nice way, because I will, I want to put French in here. French fry. French. Let's come back to it. Coming in low over. Cape enormous bird hide. Well, I want this to be Morocco, um, which I think is going to be correct because uh, coming in low, well, a word for a low, a low is what a cow does, a cow moves. So if I put uh, coming in low over Cape, well, over, if I put inside a moo, but over the cape here, and C can be abbreviation for cape, an enormous bird, which is a rock, I get Morocco, which I'm guessing if I look it up will be a type of leather. Shot a Russian composer dismissing notorious landlord. Uh, this is going to be some sort of expression for a picture, I would have thought, like an inset or something like that, or an um, Russian composer, notorious landlord. Hmm. Games host uh, recently in Germany agreed to supply wine. Um, okay, well, can we think of a recent host of the Olympic Games beginning with R? It would be Rio. Agree in Germany agreed. Well, if you agreed with somebody in Germany, you would say ja, which is their word for yes, which gives us Rioja, which is, of course, wine. So this does look like French. So, ah, shot. No, it's not a picture. It's an in-off. You get an in-off in snooker. Um, so, dismissing notorious landlord. Uh, so what's that? Rachmaninoff? Good lord. I, I mean, that's extraordinary, isn't it? So, this I think is meant to be Rachmaninoff, from which Rachman, who I vaguely remember was a notorious London landlord many years ago, is being removed. So, I mean, that is one of the most surprising sort of subtraction clues you'd ever come across. I mean, who would have thought you could take one? word from Rachmaninoff and create another short expression. Brilliant. So this does look like French fry, so I think it's nice way is the intended way, and obviously a King Edward is a, is a type of potato. They save buckles for strapping. Okay, another brilliantly worded clue where we have to um, uh, only admire really how cleverly the, the language is being used. So the word here, buckles, which is obviously very tightly bound with the word strapping. I mean, it, this is why this clue reads so so well. But buckles can mean uh, to to break. If something buckles, it would collapse. So could this be an anagram of they save? Well, looking at the letters we have, you can see how heavy set would be an anagram that would work. And if you're strapping, not in the sense of buckles, but in the sense of well built, you'd be heavy set. Brilliant. Uh, let's try this one. Doctor in tuxedo heading for wedding balls, leaving mark. Okay, well here we have this classic word doctor. Now the difficulty with the word doctor in a cryptic clue is that uh, you know, very often it's going to be DR or MO or MB or GP even. Here, though, I think it's an anagram indicator. It's saying doctor, 
the words in and tuxedo and the heading for wedding, i.e. the W, the first letter of the word wedding. And if we anagram all that up, we need something that means balls leaving mark. Well, I think, have a think about it, but I think it's an exit wound. As in the, the mark um, a cannonball might make, or a ball of shot might make when it, when it leaves its target. What's this thing? Georgie Porgy would fit. Oh my goodness, I think it, it is, isn't it? I duck three times EG prior to blowing the kisser. I mean, that is just such a superb clue. How can blowing the kisser not be a collective phrase there? But it's not, isn't it? I think the definition is just the kisser. And the kisser in the rhyme was Georgie Porgy who kissed the boys or kissed the girls and made them cry. And how I'm not sure how the wordplay's working. I think it's going to be I, this will be I here. Duck, that's going to be a zero, as in a cricket duck. Three times EG. So I can see there's lots of EGs in here. And then prior as well. So it's probably an anagram of I zero three lots of eg and the word prior and they are being blown up to blow and the whole thing means the kisser absolutely brilliant uh, dope about to cut tree close to house that's rich well, dope is normally gen it's a word that can mean information um, and about to cut well about can be re so i'm very tempted to think this is going to begin like that. Tree close to house. Well the closing letter of the word house would be an E so I'm probably having to put a tree in here and the whole thing will mean that's rich. Green, fire, green, pine, oh. oh let's come back to it. I think, I think Actually, no, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to come back to that. I'm going to delete that because I've just remembered what the answer to 17 across is and that suggests that I'm on the wrong lines with the way I'm reading the clue. So old refuge, refuse heap to burn in range in center of study. Okay, well, this is an, a very unusual uh, phrase. Um, so I'm going to put it in and then try and explain it. It's an old refuse heap. So if you can think of a synonym for that you're doing very well. It's, it's something called a kitchen midden. Okay, so to burn is to itch and that's going in range. Well, your range is your ken. Your range of knowledge would be described as your ken. In center of, that's mid, study is den. So four bits of wordplay there being strung together to give kitchen midden an old refuse heap not easy. Let's chuck the bag on the bus. It's always the last resort. Let's chuck the bag on the bus. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, woman putting on black while husband's putting on green. Well this I do remember this clue because it's one of my favorite clues of the last year. Um, and this again is a play, as we saw before, on how we naturally want to read words. We saw it, I think, with Set a Light, where we want to read this as surpass what singers do, and we have to read it as surpass what singers do. Well, here again, the word putting is so natural when we read it that we don't think that there might be another way of pronouncing the word which has a completely different meaning. So. Have a look at the clue and see if you can think of a different way of reading at least one of the puttings in this clue. And if you think of the word putting, all of a sudden the clue becomes easy. But that's that's part of the skill. So the answer is golf widow, who might be amusingly referred to as a woman who's putting on black um, while husband's putting on a green. I, I mean, I just think that that is sensational. Um, 
let's try that one. Explain why old ladies perhaps should stop in. Well, old lady, old be o, ladies. Well, you, the ladies in a restaurant would be the loo. So, and a word or an expression for w is a wc. So, o w c. So explain why, how come is going to be the answer, I think. And OWC is stopping, it's plugging a word that means in. Well, if you're home, you're in. So how come is the answer there? Very clever. Plain to see on reflection where general obligation falls. Uh, well, here it helps if you can think of a plain uh, that would fit into this uh, this construction. So five letter word beginning with L. If you know the word Lano, you're well on the way to solving the clue. You can see that reflected there is the expression on all, which is where a general obligation might fall. It would fall on everybody. So is this Skegness? Let's chuck the bag on the bus. It's always the last resort. <laughs> Good Lord, yeah. If we take the last letters of let's chuck the bag on the bus and it's, so you're always taking the last letter, it would spell Skegness, which of course is a resort. So this looks like Irato without reading the clue. Uh, one visiting writer at Ode. Yes, okay, so you might be visited by the muse. And Irato, I think, was the muse of. Is it poetry? But um, so that would make sense with ode here as well. And you can see just hidden there inside the letters of writer at ode, the word the word irato. Eccentric whose line is far from fine. Whose line is far, eccentric whose line is far from fine. Eccentric would be. Oh, not sure. Whack idiot. Uh, no. Victor and I felt that Peter should provide Grant. Okay, well, this is again a monstrously difficult clue. Uh, helps to know that um, Victor uh, is another of these international radio words uh, for V. So if I put a V in there, see if you can solve it now. And the, the skill here is that Richard has used the, the expression, I felt that, so naturally in the wording of the clue that it, you don't think it could be a separate component of the wordplay. But if you were to say, oh, I felt that, you might also have said, ouch. So V, ouch, and Peter is a word that can mean safe, would give vouch safe, which is, I think, an old word which means grant. Um, so it's ex extremely difficult. Um, you can see actually up, up here it says that of the 24 grand, grand finalists, only 11 people solved this correctly in the time given. So given that this is the best of the best, uh, you can be assured this is a monstrously hard puzzle. Um, let's go back to this one then. So what's this? Whack idiot. Is this divvy? If you divvy up, you get your whack. So I think this is the word divvy. And an idiot might be a div or a divvy. So I'm tempted to say that's the answer. So what would fit here? Showery? Why is that the answer? Eccentric whose line is far from fine. Oh, eccentric whose is an anagram of the word whose followed by line, which is railway. <laughs> That's brilliant, R Y for railway there. The whole thing showery, if the weather is far from fine, it's showery. Play with funny bits of dull packaging poorly made. Uh, ah, okay. Again, very difficult to pass this correctly. But we need to read the definition here is play with funny bits. So can you look at this and think of an expression that might mean play with funny bits in it? The answer 
think is a dramedy, a cross between a drama and a comedy. And here we've got a three-letter word for, for dull, which is dry, packaging, surrounding, poorly made, an anagram of the word made. It gives us dramedy. Ah, OK, here is a, a monstrous clue. Irish girl packing makeup with variable speed. Well, have a look. See if you can work out the answer. If you can, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. Um, this is, uh, well, extraordinary. Being familiar with Irish names is, is one of those sort of um, exotic skills that can help with one times crossword in a thousand, but it can be um, you know, game changing if you can write in an answer like this. So, packaging makeup with various variable speed. Well, variable, when we see that in the crossword clue, is normally going to be X, Y, or Z. So, here I'll tell you it's Y. So, we need to put a Y here speed, miles per hour. Your makeup might be described as your DNA. So, you put DNA around Y, M, P, H, and you get Dimpna or Dimpna, or probably another pronunciation because my pronunciation knowledge of Irish names is so poor, but um, this is the answer. And um, uh, yeah, well done if you solved it. Uh, how Persian might go without train to the west? Aha, well, now I've got this M here, I can solve this clue. We need to know that a Persian is very often a type of cat in crosswords. So Persian might go meow, and you can see this is without W O and aim reversed to the west um, to train. If you train your gun on someone, you aim it. So, so my thought that this began with green was complete nonsense. It's obviously going to be Genoa cake, I think now. So, dope is going to be Gen again. About to cut tree. Okay, well it's an oak tree. Um, Genoa cake. Okay, so about is circa C A cutting oak, and then the again the close to the house is the E here. So the Genoa cake, which is obviously a rich type of cake. So well done if you saw that more quickly than I did. Um, frail, well, weedy perhaps. Okay, frail after time. So T followed by Weedy would give dressing for the outdoor life, Tweedy. And there we go. So, thoroughly impossible crossword, um, but as I say, an absolute lesson in the skill of the setter. So, I really, really encourage those of you who, and I know that we do have a number of uh, viewers who enjoy uh, setting crosswords and compiling for various of the national newspapers. And in my opinion, this is as fine an example as you could ever wish to see. So thanks very much to Richard. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content, please do subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.